Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone, wherever you are. Today, we will interview Lydia Rangeloska. Lydia is the long-suffering wife of Sam Vaknin, the world's number one level nine narcissist. He is also the author of the pioneering seminal book, Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. It is a book that all of you should own, read, or at the very least, highlight. You can also, of course, steal a copy from the library near you. So now, back to Lydia Vangelovska. Lydia, the first question we have is this. Your husband, Sam Vaknin, the self-proclaimed -proclaim, authority on narcissism, advises victims of abuse to abandon the narcissist. He calls it the policy of no contact. Scram, flee to the hills, leave the narcissist. Don't bother to work on the relationship simply end it. In other words, the question is, instead of shooting this video with Sam, why don't you simply shoot Sam? <laughs> I won't do that. Uh, firstly, because uh, you, Sam, you, that's you, uh, you know things, you're aware of the things. You have the ability of making a difference, and this is what you are good at to analyze, synthesize, and present it. And you are really helping people to know uh, narcissists more intimately. So mm -hmm. the, the victims of the, their narcissists will be able to go with them easier. But aren't you a victim? Aren't you live with a narcissist. By definition, aren't you a victim of narcissistic abuse? There is difference between uh, you and other narcissists. You were diagnosed with uh, tested actually with high IQ, mm -hmm. and so. uh, it's very rare, rare, I mean rare, uh, to find a narcissist who is uh, able to make the difference. And you went deep inside you. You were honest to yourself. You wanted to know what was wrong after you your wife first wife divorced after you spent some uh, time in jail after you bankrupt, so you wanted, you were curious to know more about yourself. So you're not, not so you're many not, people have the guts of So you're not, you're not feeling that you're abused or victimized? I personally not, because I so what actually can, what have kind of some advice? coping strategies. So if you're, not, if you're not abused and victimized, what kind of advice can you give to people who are abused and victimized? I was abused and victimized by worse narcissists than you are. Uh -huh. I was where, already... Where and where? In, from my childhood, I was brought up in a uh, such dysfunctional uh, family by parents who were mm -hmm. one was a psychopathic narcissist, the other was a cerebral narcissist. Mm -hmm. And uh, you developed, you developed the... I developed, they actually trained me to find my coping uh, strategies. Mm -hmm. So I do have that experience. And I had it before I met you. So what I suffered with them, I can't say that I'm suffering with you. You're actually piece of cake for me. What's it here? So you're gonna share you're gonna share your coping strategies in I the center. I would love to because uh, until now many people who know my story, my friends that I shared with, they something was there that resonated with them and they found it uh, very helpful. And did you use some of these strategies with, with some? With you, yes. And were were they successful? Did it we are it? still married, right? After right. 20 years. Right, right. Last time I checked, we were. Yeah. So this leads to the next uh, question. Sam claims to be a cerebral narcissist, and according to his theory, he invented the he invented the phrase cerebral narcissist. Yep. According to his theory, cerebral narcissists don't have sex. So if I trust what he says, then last time you had sex was in the first Bush administration, <laughs> or when Tony Blair was young, whichever was earlier. How do you cope with that, the lack of sex? I mean, you're a good-looking cooker and so on. Men should be queuing up to uh, do whatever men do with women. I'm not aware. So what, what is it? Why, 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 how do you cope with not having sex? Let's uh, answer to this question in more intimate uh, settings, like in the, for the seminar, for example. Intimate settings? There's going to be 200 people there. <laughs> intimate? Intimate. Now? <laughs> okay. More than 200, I hope so. Okay, but you are aware of the problem and you are coping with it? Of course I am. Mm -hmm. And of course I am coping 
Do you regard it as a problem? No, not in my view. Not in your view. That's intriguing. It's worth coming to London just to hear the answer to this one. And so, on to the next question. Sam describes a trip in which he met a 10-year-old, and the 10-year-old spent an evening with him, and then she said, he is not human, he is a scanning machine. That's a true story, as you know. You were yeah. there, actually. Yeah. And so the question is, how do you live, how do you survive with someone who has no emotions, who is a scanning machine, even a 10-year-old can see, it. it's so obvious, has no empathy, hates people, holds them in contempt, is totally asocial, asexual, a-emotional, a-existent. How do you cope with this empty shell? How do you live with something like that? Many of my friends told me that I have some uh, gift to see through the mask of the people, uh, to go directly to their belief or and to find and hook to some of their emotions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm trying to nurture that emotion. So is he lying so, to us? When Sam says he has no emotions, is he lying to us? Uh, I think that narcissists, actually Sam, has very suppressed emotions. Actually, there are many, not, uh, it's a set of emotions that he suppressed mm -hmm. in order to survive when mm -hmm. he was abused. So he actually has no emotions because he actually has strong emotions. It's exactly the opposite. Exactly. He, he, he has to suppress them. He had to suppress them mm -hmm. in order to survive. And you, sure. you claim to have access to these emotions. I don't know if I have access, but I can say that somehow I read them. I can feel them. Mm. Well, so I don't know on what level that is. Some people will say it's on an on unconscious level that people communicate and so on. But the narcissist, you, uh, it's not that you fully don't have the psychopath. The psychopaths don't don't have any emotions. No, many people say. From my experience, many people say that I'm a psychopath based on the movie I Psychopath. But, but so. that movie, we know, we both know that that movie was about the director, not about you. Right. <laughs> could be. Could really, Could really. I couldn't communicate Plus, with him. I didn't see any emotions. Never mind how much I wanted to contact with him to make that connection. No. Simple no, that's communication. All, that, that's all because it's psychopath, it's because he's Australian. Now, <laughs> next to I don't think so. That's okay. Now to the last question is last question is uh, we sometimes love people and sometimes we like people and sometimes if we're lucky we love people whom we like. Do you like Sam? Very much so. Do you like him? Very much so. Wow. Something must be very wrong with you. <laughs> Even I don't like him. <laughs> Even I don't like him at all. <laughs> okay, folks, this was Lydia Rogelowska, and on the 24th and 25th of September in London, if you are lucky enough to, take, to get a ticket, you will be able to see her. She is the second part of the second day. We hold the best to the last. And she will talk about her experiences with Sam and other narcissists and psychopaths. Lydia in Wonderland. Second part of the second day. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Buy the ticket now. Richard is waiting. Thank you. Thank you.